Hi there, Timothy Linsdow, video producer and a Christian. I've been discussing issues of burying power lines and the difficulty of, of uh, fires being started by power lines, such as in California where I live. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more about what it takes to bury power lines. Before we start, like and comment on my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Well, the big issue is going to come down to price, as with does in everything. Because underground, 230 kilovolt lines cost 10 to 15 times more than overhead lines. Now, that includes uh, substations, use of specialized labor, the proposed overhead double circuit, 230 uh, kilovolt line would cost one million dollars per mile. I would say it's probably more than that. Part of the added cost to bearing lines may include routing and boring to avoid other underground installations such as water, natural gas, and sewer lines. An overhead line often can be routed around or over these problems. Um, if you ever seen a map of, of pipelines laid across the U.S., it, it's astounding the amount of pipelines. You'd be surprised what you're walking over every day. So when they go to dig these lines, put these vaults in, all of that has to be avoided or dealt with in some way. So that's another major cost uh, and problem with uh, getting or bearing power lines. Now some have asked, what about electric and magnetic fields? you ever seen a picture of somebody holding up a fluorescent lamp under overhead lines that can light the lamp? Well, there you go. Well, electric magnetic fields are generally higher directly over an underground installation. So it's that earth doesn't provide shielding. Uh, uh, directly o uh, and directly under an overhead installation. Now, magnetic fields tend to decrease more rapidly the farther you get away from the uh, underground installations. So that's something. Uh, noise and lighting. Now overhead uh, high voltage lines can emit a hiss or hum noise. Now underground lines are silent except in the immediate area uh, or at, at uh, transition substations. And uh, those have to be lighted uh, at night for security. Transition stations. Uh, high voltage underground transmission lines require small transition stations wherever the underground cable connects to overhead transmission. So transition stations require grading, access roads, storm water management facilities, and fencing. And that gets us back to the issues uh, of land ownership again. Who owns the property? It could be anybody. And you're going to have to deal with each one of them. You also it may again have multiple agencies that you're going to have to deal with, uh, which could be uh, one, two dozens. Uh, so there, that's a whole nother problem, a whole nother cost of administration that you would have to go through. Uh, also, site restoration. Now we're very conscious of our environment in the U.S. and we pay much attention to it. You're going to have to do site restoration. It's a much larger endeavor than it is for overhead construction because soils disturbed along the entire route, top soils have to be restored and returned uh, to vegetated areas, and all hard surface areas must be reestablished to meet local codes. So vegetated areas may require up to two years to return to pre-construction conditions. So that means they may need extra care and, uh, and people watching to see what happens. They may have to do more work to perfect that. So it's an ongoing process, an ongoing cost. So it comes down to a lot more cost. And this is why uh, this, it's a major factor. Now you go into major metropolitan areas, you're not going to hardly see one power line anywhere. Are all buried in very confined and contained spaces. And there, many cities have underground uh, tubing, if you will, or uh, underground facilities where power lines can be run. 
but those are already built into the infrastructure of the city. But smaller cities are not going to have that, and especially country. When you start getting out there and digging up things, it's going to get really expensive. Now, you may notice if you've traveled at all in smaller, less affluent countries, you're going to see a lot more power lines than you would like in the U.S. or Europe. Europe in particular uh, is very strong in burying their power lines where they can. But it's, it's a heck of a challenge to install an underground power system. The ground, here, here's one. The ground can be too soft. So if you have to trench, uh, it won't hold up. It can collapse. Uh, it may be too hard, which means it'll take a lot of hard digging, which is very expensive. Either way, it's going to cost more money. Uh, then comes uh, the digging part, as I mentioned. In developed countries like the U.S., you cannot just take some shovels and start digging a site. <laughs> and that we've covered quite a bit because there are so many details involving who owns the land and the issues of uh, the many issues it takes to get through the process. Uh, so you just can't start digging holes. Uh, another thing, you may have to dig up existing roads and streets, and that involves blocking traffic. Now, I know people who work in municipal projects, and that is a very difficult thing to do. Even if they're repairing or repaving, the process of shutting down that street, even if it's part of a day, is a big deal. They have to warn people ahead of time. They have to make preparations, uh, keep everyone safe. And all of that costs money in the process of blocking traffic. And, of course, you've got to go through permission processes in installing that, that structure. It isn't so bad if your installation might be uh, located out in the hinterlands, if you will. Well, there's not much in the way. But still you're going to find out some agency or somebody owns that property. And it's going to become more financial burden. Uh, and of course, when you start moving into more populated areas, it just continues to increase. Uh, but population density or geography of a service area can have the cost or triple it, depending on how it goes. Now, the underground power infrastructure is far more expensive as is the maintenance and repair it requires. Now that's another very good point. <clears throat> uh, if if there's something that goes wrong with the power lines, you've got to dig it up, you've got to open it up. That's a whole process. Uh, you know, these are tremendous uh, power lines carrying uh, 230 kilovolts of power. You're talking about having to shut. If it's just say one line, you're probably going to end up shutting this whole thing down, and who knows how many people that involves. More than like in some areas, hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even a million. Now, the same number of underground power lines cannot carry an equivalent amount of current as their overhead counterparts due to their inability to shed heat like the uninsulated power lines. That's another big part. Overhead power lines offer a couple of advantages over underground systems at a lower cost because of that. Adding more capacity overhead wires is usually easier in most cases, which is an added benefit. All in all, uh, underground power system is perfectly safe and plausible, and that's why it's actually preferred in some parts of the world. However, for most countries and power companies, burying power lines underground simply doesn't turn out to be as cost-effective as they want it to be. Hence, Overhead power lines are here to stay at least for a while, unless there's other, some magic of power transmission that can be come up with. But not right away. I'll also show you a, a picture of the difference between the insulated line under the ground and what can be put overhead. That's very expensive stuff uh, to make it safe. So, yeah, we'd like to bury them, but what a, the cost is enormous and all of the other factors that go along with it. So, unless we can figure out something new. Uh, I've mentioned in the past about 
uh, wind farms and solar farms, the amount of bearing of those power lines, which I've seen done. But a contractor told me that each one of those, say the uh, uh, wind windmill, wind generator, uh, the each one runs all the way back to a major power station. They don't run to substations, say a half a dozen to a substation. They all run all the way back. So it's that much more expensive uh, as an example of what underground lines cost. So on that goes, unless we're prepared to pay for that. Um, looks like it's going to be overhead lines for a while. Like and comment on my video. Subscribe to my channel if you would. And figure out a way and get out there and make it a great day.